Charles. Obviously, this is a big event, first one in Paris. I'm curious how you're feeling heading into this one and the occasion itself. Oh, I'm feeling fantastic. Uh, fighting in Paris was a dream of mine for long, being a French-Canadian, so I'm able to speak my native have a great interaction with the fan outside. Um, people might think that I'm very known in uh, Quebec, but I didn't expect to be known that well here in, in France. So yeah, it's amazing. Is that always a surreal feeling to be able to go abroad? And it's certainly the first time we're having a UFC in this, in this country to fit, realize like, oh wow, this is a worldwide thing. I'm known across the world at this point. No, it's very cool. Like I've been fighting, I fought in Korea, Abu Dhabi, US, uh, now France. So I'm, I'm traveling the world, fighting and making money. So it's a good life. Yeah, when you started this journey, did you think that was going to be something you could do to be able to travel the world and get paid to fight? It's something I wish I could do. And now I'm here. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy about it. Going to the fight itself, how are you feeling ahead of this one? How's the training camp been and, and what do you think of your opponent? Uh, losing to Shane Burgos by this majority decision uh, really changed me. I, I hate that feeling of knowing that I always came close. I'm 4-2 and two as a featherweight and the two loss are split decision and majority and two of them are questionable. So it's, it's a bittersweet uh, feeling. But now I'm, I'm feeling more like a man. As I'm growing up, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting faster and everything just getting better with time. So I'm, I'm still far away from my prime, but I'm, I'm getting better fast, that's for sure. Are those razor slim losses almost harder to take than ones where you convincingly lost? Absolutely. Like when you convincingly lost, you cannot like uh, think about it and say, oh, maybe the judge is screwed this or whatever. No, when I got, I mean, when I did the catch weight with the Rosa, he caught me with a Dars. It's the only time I got finished in my career. So that was, I accepted right away. But knowing that everybody was, Skeptical about the last performance against the number 15, 14 guy was uh, bittersweet, but I passed to the next challenge. Thank you. Just over here. Um, going off of, uh, obviously, like you said, your last loss, what, but what were the lessons learned from that? Uh, the word was berserk because I, I have good cardio and like the, the worst thing that can happen is finishing a fight knowing you could have done more. So I'm going to start with a crazy high pace. I have a tendency to start very slow, a little bit like Cowboy Cerrone. I start slow, but once I get into the fight, everything goes well. But I, I, if I start the, the fight more intense this time, I think I can break mentally a lot of people like I did with Shane. And of course, you're taking on Nathaniel Wood, who you know made his move to featherweight in his last fight. What, what have you made of him? Uh, we had a good interaction. I saw him earlier uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, he's certainly not as big as Shane Burgos. So, yeah, that was a thing. But he's going to be very fast uh, and speed kills, so I need to be aware of that. Uh, I don't think uh, being the bigger man is absolutely great in, in some matchup, and uh, I need to be aware that, uh, yeah, he's going to be a fast little man. What did you make of his last performance against Charles Rosa? It was interesting. Uh, the, the calf kick, I, I was a little bit... Uh, uh, I was like, why you don't do more? You got a man who's on one leg and he doesn't want to fight anymore. You're destroying him. And he didn't push for the finish, which is not like me. And people are calling this a striking match. Uh, I, th I think I'm going to have to sprawl and brawl with him. Uh, yeah, that's my guess. So with that being said, how do you see the fight going down on Saturday? Uh, heavy pressure from myself. I need to be aware of that speed. But if I can uh, break him, I, I think I can break him mentally. I think uh, Charles Rosa wasn't uh, pushing enough. I think he got caught by those leg kick and it killed his confidence. So yeah, I just need to push the pace uh, from round one. And I think by round two, I can, I can break him mentally. And of course, being a French Canadian, how much would it mean to you to, to get your hand raised here at such a historic event here in France? Oh, it, would be, it would be a dream. Like, there's so many people that I know, like uh, rappers or uh, comedians. There's a lot of people that I know who are going to be there which I grew up watching them. So yeah, fighting in front of these people who influenced me to become the man I am today is, would be, uh, with my end race, would be absolutely amazing. Thank you. Of course. Charles, just to uh, touch on that, I mean, like you said, oh, over here. Hey, gotcha. Um, you know, you are pretty well known here. With the UFC not having been to Canada in a couple of years, is this the ideal situation for you? Obviously, the French fans are going to be behind you. Yeah, 100%. Uh, even fighting in Canada right now, when, when boost me as much uh, in terms of uh, like they say oh we got an event in Calgary or something I wouldn't be the first one to jump in of course if UFC want me to to go over there that would be cool but yeah traveling the world for me right now is uh, my goal how much do you actually hear the fans when you're in there how much of a role does that play 
Oh, I, big role. I really like the energy of people. I went from a crowd booing me last time uh, in Long Island to a crowd cheering me. And, you know, even when the decision was announced, they were like, uh, like they were all for Shane, of course. But I, I really like the fan and the fans seem to like me. Like I, I fought in Desmond Green's backyard in uh, Rochester in Korea against Duo Choi and uh, now Long Island against Shane. So now it's going to be the first time that I actually have a crowd that might be behind me. So that, that's going to be very interesting. And you mentioned Korea. I believe this is your first time fighting in Europe. Are you going to stick around Paris and see the sights? Any plans to, to have a little vacation after? Yes, of course. My fiance is here with me. She's been with me for the last five years, and uh, we've been building uh, uh, so many great things. And uh, her... Because of vaccine and uh, all those stuff, she could, she wasn't able to travel. So now she's here, and there's many countries that we can travel to. So yeah, I'm gonna stick around Europe for a while. Well, enjoy. Congrats. Thank you. <coughs> That's it. Oh, uh, yes, Charles, sir. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing good. You want to do it French or English? Uh, in English, please. All right, let's do it. Uh, so Natalian Wood is pretty well-rounded. Do you see any weaknesses in his game? Yeah, I mean, the fact that he doesn't want to finish his opponent as much as uh, big featherweights want. Like, uh, they, I, he, re he really had, like, a, something given on a platter last time, and he didn't push to finish. I don't know if it was the stress of getting caught or whatever, but uh, the lack of, of uh, killer instinct, I think, is his biggest weakness. And you mentioned uh, Schemburgo several times during this interview. Um, now he signed with DPFL. Um, that complicates a little bit to the chances to see a rematch in the near future, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I, we, we had a gentleman agreement. Uh, we shook hands after the fight, and uh, we know. He knows, I know. So we pass uh, to the next. Have you already picked your workout song? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, I won't disclose it because it's a, a big French song from a big French rapper, and I want everybody to... Feel that moment with me. <laughs>